Hi guys. <clears throat> I um I've had a super long day. It is 9:30 at night. And I've been running around doing all the things like I always do today. And on my way home, I thought, you know, what is speaking to me this week when it comes to all the things that I have going on? And for me, it's motivation. And I wanted to create this video quick um, and just talk about how important your motivations are, how important your goals are, not only to whether you're running a mobile bartending business, whether you want to open a business in general, whether you're working for somebody else, you need to know what your worth is, where you're going, why you're going there. You need to have an idea of what you want. I'm not saying you have to have a whole plan and a map and you know a checklist and that it has to go perfect because nine times out of ten it's never going to. Um, but what I am saying is you have to have a path. You have to you have to make a plan. And if the plan changes, that's okay as long as you're in control of that. As long as your motivations change, your desires change, you're pivoting for the good of yourself, your family, your children, your spouse. We know whatever whatever it is that you hold closest to you. And <clears throat> I kind of thought about that today. Um, my typical day looks like juggling a few things. I have a day job. Um, where I'm actually a full-time cyber school teacher. Today was our last day. Um, so I was getting things buttoned up for the school year. And then I'm speaking with my clients for my mobile bartending. Um, this weekend I'm actually doing some day of event coordination for a wedding. But we're also doing the rehearsal dinner um, with our bartending business. I'm taking care of, you know, making sure all their vendors get in and out on the day of their event on Saturday. Um, and just making sure they have the perfect day. It's a lot of pressure. Um, when you're doing coordination or when you're offering any kind of a service, especially for someone's wedding, um, it's, it's super important. You have to be perfect because this is their one big day. So um, we were going over things like that, getting everything together, getting our timeline ready, and then um, transition to, hey, I just need a breather. I just need to be able to, you know, sit with my daughter and hang out. Um, I'm lucky enough that my family has a pool and they live close by and we just took a few hours this afternoon and just hung out and then it was right back to okay what's on my to-do list like what needs to get done oh the oil in my car needs to be changed and we need to eat dinner and I need to make sure you know the house is kept up did I do things for the house today and I need to get back to the 15 inquiries that I got in the last two days because it has been nuts um, and then oh also you know our other business where I have um, tenants that um, live in our apartment house like I need to take care make sure they're all taken care of because it's bill time for the month um, making sure all of that stuff is is squared away so um, another crazy day another long to-do list and I'm thinking you know what is motivating me to have this crazy of a schedule what is doing it why am I doing all of this and it boils down to a couple of things um, there, years and years and years ago, I figured out that the thing that fulfills my personality, myself, more than anything else in this world is helping other people. Why I'm on here creating videos. Um, because if I, if there's anything that I can share that can be helpful to someone else, that is my, like an act of service. That is my like love language. I love to help people any way that I can. So if there's something that I learned that can be passed on and make someone's life a little bit easier, I am all about it. So years ago when I met my husband, and we were dating and we were like, where is this going to go? What are we going to do? You know, what is the plan? I always had this plan of teaching full time, um, getting my master's, really wanting to get my doctorate and just having a stable family life like family needed to come first I wanted a stable environment I wanted a cute cozy roof over our head I wanted to have a few babies I wanted to be able to afford them because now more than ever prices are going through the roof on everything and I am so grateful that I have all of these jobs we have all these businesses um, 
that, you know, we're in a better position than most. And I understand that. And I am grateful. But we've worked really, really, really hard to get here. And <clears throat> so it, it takes a lot to, to keep wanting to do all of these things. But what I'm saying that I've learned that is so important is your motivations. So what journey is it that you want to be on in the future? And what is motivating you to get there? The me helping other people, me teaching other people is exactly why I went to be a teacher because I love to help people. I love to help people learn and I love to help people getting excited about learning. So I, I could teach you anything. I could teach you like content, like I teach science. I don't even care that you learn the science. I care that you learn life skills. I care that we built a relationship that you feel you can trust me and come to me with questions that you have, whether it's science or life. Um, I care that I can be like a positive, stable impact on your life. That is what I care about. And so the teaching for me has helped me to understand the best ways to teach other people, to help other people, to motivate other people. Um, whether I'm in an actual classroom with students or not, um, I will never be upset that I've gotten so many degrees in teaching, even though I'm doing all of these other things too all of these other businesses on my own that technically aren't teaching um, because I've learned so much from all of it. So it's just like what is motivating you every day and you don't have to have this set plan, you don't have to have this set roadmap, but how are you going to get there? How are you going to execute it? And how are you going to get closer and closer every day and um, to the point where when you want to pivot, you can. Like if you want to do something else, you can. Um, but you put yourself in the position to do that. Um, this summer, I think, has been one of the more challenging than most, which I say, like, I feel like every phase of my life gets a little bit more challenging. I wear more and more hats every day. And um, I, I think that just my personality, I like to take care of as many things as I can. So <clears throat> I'm not surprised by how busy I am. But... Um, for me, the initial motivation to get my schooling under my belt, to get my bachelor's, to get my master's, to get my doctorate, was looking at my husband, looking at our dog before we had kids, and saying, like, I care about these humans. I care about that dog. I want the best for us. I want to always have this roof over our head until God grants us, you know, a bigger one. I want... Um, to be able to spend quality time with them and not to have to always work six to seven days a week. I want these things. So I didn't ask for something specific. I didn't ask for a million dollars and a new car and a ginormous mansion. I never asked for that. I asked for things that I knew I could give myself in a year, two years, five years, 10 years. And every time I do that and I just stay motivated to that, it happens. And sometimes you don't recognize it right away and then it'll hit you all at once and it's like, wow, like these are the days that I prayed for five years ago. These are the days that I prayed for 10 years ago. Um, my husband is currently deployed and I'm doing everything by myself. And honestly, my personality, my work ethic, I'm great at running a house by myself. I'm great at being independent. Um, I adore him and everything he does for me and he is my partner 100% and he helps me with everything, but I can do it on my own. I'm good at being on my own. And so this has been more challenging because not only am I running two businesses, working full time, in college full time finishing the doctorate, but I have my daughter that I take care of and I have no, you know, spouse support. And I know a lot of people are, you know, one parent households, whether it was by choice or not. And it's hard. It's a lot. Um, I'm currently pregnant with our second child and I just I have all the things going on, but I keep saying this is that motivation, that mindset piece. They're good problems to have. They could always be worse. The glass is always half full. It's never half empty. And I think the biggest thing you can do for yourself is start looking at all the things that you have in front of you and stop looking at them as negative and start saying like, you know, someone else would love to have my problems. I heard something once. And someone said, you know, if we all sat at a table and we all put our problems out like cards and we just share them, you would quickly pick your own back up before you picked up someone else's. Because everybody has their fair share of problems. Everybody has a hard time. And 
you don't realize sometimes until you look at the big picture, until you see what other people are going through, or you see on like a large scale what other countries are going through, um, how much worse it really could be. So I, I kind of, these last 10 years, I did a couple things. I changed my mindset. Everything is positive. Even on the worst days, guys, I can tell you right now, I'm driving a car that I adore, that I've spent so much money on, and literally like two months back to back, there were accidents that were not my fault. And now it has all these dents and dings in it, and I'm waiting patiently for it to get redone. And I'm just like, hey, it could have been so much worse. It could have not been drivable. Me and my daughter could have gotten hurt. Um, you know, it, there are so many worse things that could happen that I feel blessed that it's still running, that I can still take me where I need to go safely, that I'm on the list to get it fixed by a really good, honest, you know, mechanic. Um, you just have to be positive. And I know how hard it can be if you lose loved ones, if you're, you know, down on your luck. And sometimes it feels like when it rains, it pours. But I have a secret to you from that. Um, sometimes when it rains, it pours. It's because we're in such of a negative mindset that we're attracting more negative things to us. Um, and I know I'm kind of going off all over, but the whole theme of this is like your motivations, your intentions, and how you make those work for you to be a better business owner, to be a better spouse, to be a better parent, to just be a better friend. Um, because you need to start that from home. You need to start that from yourself before you can go out and like be the best owner, get the best clients, make the most money. Um, you have to do all these things first for yourself. You need to know you. You need to know you better than anybody else. And you need to be solid in you and you need to command the prices that you want, the clientele that you want, the people that you want in your circle. And you don't stop, you never stop. I had a really awesome week last week. Um, We've had property that we held on to for a little bit. The market's crazy. I said, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you know the property up. I told my husband, he's like, I'm not even there. And I said, it's gonna be good. Like, we don't have to sell unless we get what we want. Um, you know, it's gonna be good. I think now is the right time. Like, let's not sit on this. And he said, okay, whatever you need to do. Um, when I tell you that I sold that property in less than two days for over asking price, um, and my husband, who is still, again, not here, um, is just floored. Um, Literally the next day, I was doing three weddings. I was um, working on my doctorate stuff. I was taking care of my daughter. Like, don't stop, don't stop. We're only doing this once. You only get one go around at this. And whether the motivation for you is to have enough financial freedom that you can you know, help other people in your community or help people in your family, whether the motivation for you is to be down to like one job where you're either owning your own business or you know it's freeing up some of your time because you're making more in one job than maybe the other job that you had whatever that motivation is for you you don't stop until you crush it and when you crush it I hope you have another dream waiting I hope another door is opening I hope another opportunity is knocking and you just bust through it you don't stop because the limits that you're that you have in front of you are the ones that you're putting on yourself and no one can take away from you the hard work that you're putting in. No one can take away from you the hours that you're putting in. No one can take away from you um, your mindset, your positivity, um, how you make other people feel. No one can take that away. So keep doing what you're doing every single day and don't stop. And don't apologize for who you are because if you're in a circle that thinks you're not enough, you need to find a new circle. You need to outwork everyone in the room. You need to out hustle everyone in the room. You need to work longer than everyone in the room. And they don't need to know about it. They'll start to know. They'll start to know when they hear of the things that you're doing and the money that you're making. You'll know because you'll see people look at you differently. You'll see people treating you differently. And even then, don't change. Don't change anything. You treat them the same. You um, do the same. You know, you keep your circle small. And you do it for all of those right reasons. You do it for your family, for your spouse, for your kids, for your parents. Um, I've said my biggest thing is my family. Um, my parents are really hardworking. My dad, like blue collar, construction work. And every day I pray that I can be financially free enough that when my parents or my husband's parents 
um, get old enough or they're ill or something happens, that it is without question that we can take care of them and give back to them for everything that they gave us. And I'm not saying in a financial way, I'm saying um, they literally took care of us. They gave us life. They gave us a stable roof over our heads. They gave us good morals, good values. They, you know, never let us see them sweat when times were tough or when money was tight. And what better gift could you give back to somebody that gave you life than to be able to take care of them and not it be a financial burden and not it be stressful. And so my goal has always been in life is to take care of my family first. And anything that I'm blessed with that's extra, well, that's just, that's just extra. But I know because I'll never stop hustling. I'll never stop working. I'll never stop, you know, putting in the extra hours that even where I'm at right now as compared to five years ago just blows my mind. I used to work six nights a week, five days a week teaching, six nights a week bartending. I would come home at three in the morning, 3.30 in the morning, just in time to take about an hour and a half nap and shower and be back on the road to go teach again to then bartend again all night. I would budget to my last $50 in my bank account every single week to pay off all of my college debt. Within four years, I paid off all of my college debt through bartending and teaching. And I promised myself that if I did that through like 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, that when I hit those mid twenties, then I wouldn't have to do it anymore. I promised myself that I was gonna keep going until that debt was gone. And I kid you not, in under five years time, I paid off almost $50,000 in debt and I was able to stop working six nights a week, five days a week. And now I choose when I work. And I'm here for my daughter. And I'm going to be here for my son. And I'm here for my husband. And guys, I'm 20. I'm not even 28. I'll be 28 next month. So don't stop. Nothing can get in your way if you don't let it. And I know this was like a deep video. And you can literally see like my daughter's stroller upside down in her her like toy chest over there and I you know I, I I don't apologize I don't apologize for it because this is real and this is you know hustling and this is how crazy life gets every day and I'm sure all of your lives can be just as hectic and you can relate to something that I have said on here so <clears throat> if you got anything out of this or if you have any more questions about how I hustle and how I do these things, um, just let me know in the comments and I would love to respond. Sometimes your, your questions spark amazing ideas for new videos and I can share, you know, another aspect of what I have going on with you. And I just hope that it's helpful and it's inspiring to, to someone out there who, um, who could use it because I've needed people like me. A long time ago and I found them I I seek them out and I found them and I, I held them tight and I still hold them tight and I um, I use it as motivation and you know I don't take every single word from other people as gospel um, but I pick and choose and I listen and I kind of read between the lines and I just keep little nuggets of things that I learn and um, I just try and share them with as many people as I can because sometimes we don't always have those people right in front of us to help us along our journeys. And sometimes it can be so isolating and scary, especially if you have this brilliant idea and you're so scared to share it with the world. Um, and I'm telling you, the only person that's holding you back is you. So don't do it. Just jump, 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 jump. Because you jump and you're in it and you're running. And I can guarantee you that 99% of what you are waiting on you'll look back and you'll say, why did I wait so long? And uh, you'll be so happy when you make that jump. Thanks.